Oh, son. We all want to be the main character, dog. I remember growing up, I never really fell in the camp of anime. It's real popular nowadays, and it's just been growing and growing and growing in prevalence. And I've always just been in the, like the Filthy Frank camp where I just thought it was kind of corny. I didn't even really watch Dragon Ball Z or Naruto as a kid. I was raised... I wasn't raised by my grandparents, but a lot of the media I consume I respect and respected was from them. So it was always like the Stallones, the fucking big one was uh, Chuck Norris, the Walker Texas Ranger and shit like that. And uh, I'll give you a quick story to kind of emphasize, one, how weird of a kid I was and I kind of just like didn't have a lot of self-confidence and shit, but I remember ever since I was probably about 10 years old up until I was like 18 years old I played a game called World of Warcraft it was my favorite fucking game all my friends I would spend time and go and play Call of Duty and shit but whenever it was just me and myself I would be in my room playing this fucking game I fell in and out of it but it was I loved it and I never really excelled in the game I had collected a lot of shit but I wasn't like one of these Asmongold streamer dudes I was just kind of like living vicariously in this game how I wanted to live in real life. So there's a there's a form in this game called there's a way you can play this game that a lot of people choose to which is role playing. Like there's a lot of customizations and shit like that. So it's real easy to to play along with a character. Well, I remember whenever I first ever saw the Grease movie. There's a scene in the beginning of Grease with John Travolta where he turns around, he's kissing the girl and shit like that, and he has a cigarette, and he gives that smile like that. I thought that was the coolest shit ever. Like, that was some straight-up main character shit to me back then. I was like, holy fuck, bro. If I could be like John Travolta, shit. I, just, I thought he was the coolest person. So what do I do? I don't dress up like him in real life. I don't, like, ride him a notebook. I, I make a character on World of Warcraft named Zucko, which was, a, I guess, his fucking name of John Travolta's character in Greece, Danny or whatever. And I, I remember there's this way you can role play, that I would role play in these games where there'd be like these little hangouts in the game is medieval theme. And there'd be like inns and bars and shit. And I would like in my mind imagine in real life, but I'd be like slow walking through these bars. And I would just do that. I wouldn't even talk to nobody or nothing. I was just, like I said, living vicariously in this game. I was super impressionable. So all this shit, it just like soaked in me. But I, it, it had such an impact on me back then. But I just, whenever I would go and I would look in the mirror, I would see the exact opposite of these archetypes. And I would just get discouraged and never want to do the hard work. I was a fat kid my whole teenage years, and that cycle perpetuated over and over and over. I would get motivated and look in the mirror and think I wasn't enough to do it. And in general, I believe we all want to be the main character, but some of us are just better at subduing that feeling to where everyone isn't like this narcissistic personality. And I was grow, grow, I grew up on all these old movies and TV shows and shit like that, but this 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 craving for this type of a character in media has not changed. I remember early in the 80s and all that shit, because I'm, we're again, raised by my grandparents, so I saw this shit. You had, like, these fucking, you had the Rockies, the Fonzies, all these cool types. Then you go into the mid-2000s, and this was another one that really affected me, the movie American Pie. Now, up until this point, I'd underachieved as a kid, and I use this word, I try to use this word sparingly because I like my childhood, really. I had fun, I have a lot of melancholy, nostalgic memories and shit like that. But in terms of what I wanted at the time and the way I felt, a lot of it was spent being self-conscious and with low self-esteem. And I remember whenever I first saw the movie American Pie, I was real young. I was exposed to a lot of bad shit at young and lost a lot of my youth. But... The character Stifler and all this party culture and shit. So then I designed this thought in my mind that holy shit, all this, all this, all these things I want, this changes in high school. This is whenever I'll be able to achieve all this shit. It, I, I coined this phrase a couple months ago, but I had what I would like to call the American Pie Dream. I just 
assume that high school and time would fix all these things. I, again, not thinking that I needed to actually put in work mentally and physically if I wanted anything to change, but I didn't, again, didn't think about that shit. And as time goes on, you still in media see how prevalent these figures are. And my upbringing, m you might not have played the games I played, you might not have know, had the same group of friends I had, but a lot of the same upbringings of wanting to be these people, but feeling like you don't have the ability to do it, repeats itself. You see it with these outgoing, bombastic personalities that keep showing up. The Andrew Tates, this guy that just came on the scene, or I guess he's been doing it for a while, but he just got popular. Zerka, uh, even a Sneeko, even though I think he's just kind of like a little kid on the inside, screaming, ah, he's like, he's so impressionable. That Sneeko, I used to really fuck with him, but it's like, holy shit, that dude, Sneeko, really just, he lets every single thing just fucking imprint on him and he changes his views and everything around things. That's besides the point. But you see this sex, sex, you see this cycle perpetuate itself. And I, I thought I found my way out back in, in 2020. I discovered this red pill. And to me, it was presented as like, the answer to all my fucking problems. We're gonna be solved by this. I can go out and chase women and get all this shit I've always desired. I just gotta put the work in. And I finally decided to start putting the work in and realized it was all bullshit. It was all bullshit. A lot of this personal development comes from growth. I have just now in the past three months finally achieved what I've been working for for three years. To quit, be able to have the willpower to quit all my vices. That be it alcohol, I do not drink. Be it smoking, I do not smoke. I went with cigars for a little bit and every once in a while I'll have a cigar but no weed and no nicotine in the lungs at all. Fucking no pornography and also no hedonistically chasing women. This was a realization that really changed shit up for me and it's honestly bettered, my, bettered me. And... I made this realization that I'm chasing all these women and all this my meaningless tender fucking bullshit and I end up realizing, holy shit, I would honestly rather beat my meat even though I don't want to do that. Like, the set, this is more work to chase a woman than anything. So, all these things that are put out into this culture that I'd been chasing, I realized were just kind of fucking pointless that I had desired since I was a kid because my upbringing was kind of weird and the media I was exposed to is different but it's like that's part of growing that is part of becoming your own main character is these realizations and things that we epiphany moments we have it's not it's it's not uh degrading another person's way of living and being like oh fuck that person they're all wrong oh, I know exactly I know the answers to everything no it's that we all each have our own individual truths that we discover along the way and that make us our own individual unique people that make us our own sovereign individual unique person and that's one thing that was probably one of the best realizations i had ever made that's probably one of the best realizations and things that have helped develop my character along the way but the intro to this video has been pretty long and i've been rambling and whatnot but this is not about, oh, this is, or we all live happy, everyone's free. No. This is about how I finally develop myself to be able to do the things I want to do. For, I spent a two-year period on the cycle of procrastination, and that eventually built, built into the cycle of like, oh, I got to jump off the ledge, I'm nervous to do so. And for six months, I've been on what I say, you jumped off the fucking ledge, and now you got 150,000 miles to walk. Because that's how this shit works. You'll start with any goal, with anything you want in this life and you want to work towards. It, it's all this built up tension of wanting to do it and then eventually get to the point where you got to actually, per, you actually got to do it or you realize, you, real, you make a realization you actually got to do it at this point or you're just going to fucking, or it's easier to just give up because you're wasting too much time. And for me, I took the jump, and then I made another realization. 
that these goals and shit like that is ever changing. Your mind is ever changing. And half of this fucking shit of chasing your dreams, all your goals, yada, 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 self-improvement in general, is the mental fucking battle of staying focused. Because I could still make these videos a day and they wouldn't be worth a shit. They wouldn't have any value to them at all. But I try to tell you embarrassing stories and shit like that to resonate, to be relatable, to possibly help you make these epiphany moments like I did. So, I've quit all these things. I wanted to, there were certain ones that were easier than others, but it's been like almost a year and a half battle. All of last year, all the way up until three months ago, I spent battling myself trading addictions for different addictions. And I don't even want to use that buzzword of addictions. We'll just use habits that I wanted to break and habits I wanted to implement. So, for instance, I'd be able to quit drinking alcohol, but then I would fiend, I would crave weed, and then I would find a way to get a hold of some weed, and it wouldn't make me want to smoke alcohol anymore. Or I completely quit playing video games, and then I replaced it for an addiction of just binging content from other, other, other content creators instead of producing my own. And this cycle would go on. I would stop chasing women, and then I would fall back into pornography. I would stop doing porn, and then I would just start chasing women again. And it's like, I kept trading habits one after another, and it was almost like I felt like I was retarded. I was like, I know what I need to do. Why can't I do it? And then finally, poof, I've kind of I've kind of connected the dots with things that I need to do. A lot of the and a lot of that come brings on a sense of regret of fuck I could have implemented this shit so easily a month ago for instance let's just go over some habits that I would do I would go out and chase women and try to do pickup and all this shit like that and it would work for the most part the tinder worked the best for me but I would do all this shit whenever in reality to be healthy and not be a fucking loser out trying to pick up women like all this red pill shit preaches. All you got to do to implement getting better social skills and shit like that is just talk to more people throughout the day and put it in your daily routine. You go out to a grocery store, don't be a social retard and just sit around and like, uh, yeah, yeah. hey, how you doing? Shit like that. That was one realization. Then another one was with fitness. I needed to do less volume than I was. I don't respond well to high volume. And I wanted to get an aesthetic body and all this shit. And I was stalled on my progress for so long. I switched it up. And it's like, it feels super black and white that, hey, you should have done this before. But I had struggled with this shit for so long. And now I truly... I truly have achieved what I've been wanting for. I'm still not fulfilled completely from it because I haven't achieved my overall goal which is to build some sort of generational wealth and provide this value I can provide to people online to my actual family but I've achieved all these small little goals that I've set out for myself so far and it honestly feels pretty good and that's the value that I feel like I can provide to people online is I have all these small little niches and shit like that that I've gotten a good amount of experience on. But in general, it comes down to I think that I can actually help other men who want to do this. I've, I, can, I understand what got me to this point now. And there's, there's a bunch of different things. And it's like to just outline like there's a bunch of different things that have brought me to this point. But there's a good three that I could probably generally outline. One, and this is for all the young men my age, if you're like in your early 20s or, or late teenage years, is to stay focused on something. We're so, in this social media and online shit is so ingrained in our culture nowadays, guys, that it's so ingrained in our culture nowadays that... Every single fucking time you go online, it's not like people treat this as a fucking tool. They don't treat their phone as a tool. They treat it as a fucking, like, lifeline coming into them. They'll open it up, and they'll just be sucked in that world again. It, that's why they want, they need their phone. They can't put it in another room and be chilled. They need constant noise. Because if they're not fucking plugged into that IV of their phone, then they just feel like they're, they're wasting time or they're, they're, they can't be in silence with themselves. And 
The bad thing about being plugged in all the time is you're my, you are so impressionable if you are my age or younger. And it, it's hard to admit. Do you see that Sneeko guy all the time? He gets all bent out of shape because motherfuckers say he's super impressionable whenever. That is part of being young. That is part of why a lot of rich people and super successful older people don't respect young millionaires is because of we have a lack of experience. And that's just real shit. You got to admit it. And the only way that you can keep yourself from being pulled in all these different directions and which will really cause you to implode and become depressed or go into nihilism or just not have a straight cut path is to limit the consumption of this. So that'd be the first thing is to have control over your 50%. All these older people, it's easy for them because they weren't fucking born with a lifeline plugged into them like we are. If you want to go the matrix term, we are literally in the matrix, not even plugged in in a fucking different reality. We are plugged into these phones and it's hard for us to give them up because they're so ingrained in the way we live our lives. So I'd say the first one to achieve goals like I have is limit the consumption of this and utilize it as a tool and not a fucking lifeline. Second is, second is all about, second is all about continuous learning. Don't ever be stuck in one ideology. It is very scary to be, to feel very confident and grounded in your own ideology and thinking and be like, and you dip your toes into the water of something else that's completely foreign to you and it starts to skew every your whole reality and view over the world. That's very scary. It is for me. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I read the fucking Bible and everything, even though I don't agree with all of it, but I'm a Christian at heart with a lot of Christian values. And there's some atheists online that can really sometimes bend my faith. And that shit is scary as fuck. Because I can feel so grounded and secured in my belief and my faith. And then they'll say some point that kind of starts to skew me. That might be saying something towards how strong my faith is. Who knows? But, in all honesty, a lot of us fear finding objective points and things that aren't we aren't used to. And I would say, honestly, you need to challenge yourself more and go into those depths. It's like being a soldier and going into a darkness. You're going in and you're seeing how strong your fucking mind is to take the meat and leave the bones. Take the good shit and leave the shit that, doesn't, that you don't agree with or that you hate. Because in all honesty, if we're being honest people here... There is positive insight in almost every, in all these different ideologies, Muslim, Christian, athe uh, liberal, conservative. There's positives in each one. There is no golden goose of, inf of, of ideology. So, constantly be learning, constantly be challenging your own ideas. The third one, I would say, it all just comes down to discipline. I have developed an iron fucking discipline, dog. I never thought I would be able to say some shit like that, but I truly have an iron discipline. An iron will that I do not break for shit. I do not drink, but I go to the bar. I go to the bar almost every weekend because I like to spend time with my grandpa and he likes going to the bar and karaoke and shit like that. And it's a social outing and all this. But I do not break my vow to drink. All these people are around me drinking shots, but I'm chilling. I don't crave it. I don't need it. So you need that discipline. And discipline will carry you a very long way. I'm very disciplined with these videos. I haven't missed an upload on TikTok or on YouTube in a very long time. Months. And I get zero views. There's really no incentive to me to do it than my, view, my vision of the future. So if you have, if you as a young man... Limit your consumption to your phone. If you allow yourself to be have an iron mind and don't be stuck in ideologies and constantly be learning and never stay stuck. And also develop a great sense of discipline to stay consistent with what you want to be consistent with and drop what you want to drop. You'll be alright, dog. So, don't worry too much. That was one of my biggest things that I would that would spiral me into depressions and and 
feelings of hopelessness is because I would worry so much about this shit not working out. Even as a kid, not knowing what the fuck self-improvement was, not even knowing how to better myself. I would constantly send myself into spirals of cope and new and drugs and just ruining relationships to just sink into a different reality of a video game because I hated my own reality when, in all honesty, I should have just stopped taking a deep breath and I would have been all right. I'm where I'm at now and I finally achieved my goals. I'm not a 60 year old person and I'm not done. Uh, I, I have goals for the future to go after and all this shit, but the shit I've been chasing for over three years now, I've finally been grounded on them. So enjoy this. If you enjoyed this video, leave a subscribe and fuck with your boy. Keeps me going with this shit. Keeps me with this validation and shit like that. This is the only thing I feel good about being validated. And uh, chase paper and enjoy nature. Have a great day. Have a good one.